They say one person's trash is another person's treasure. In this video, I'm going to show you seven different places where this valuable trash hides in your jewelry making studio and how to efficiently collect it so it can be transformed into your real treasure. Hi, if you are new here, I am a jeweler, professional optical diamond setter and a GIA graduate gemologist based in the UK. I have been making jewelry using real gemstones and precious metals since 2003. It has taken me over 20 years to get to this point. In my channel, I talk about anything jewelry related. When we come to recycling precious metal in a jewelry making studio, we normally think of the off cuts and old jewelry, but overlook our trash. There is actually lots of value in the rubbish found in a jewelry making studio where you deal with precious metals. The first place where you can find this valuable trash is on your hand. After working with any precious metals, you can see that the skin on my hands is grey. That layer of grey is actually very fine precious metal dust. To collect this treasure, simply wipe your hands with wet wipe. I have a bit of OCD, I like to use antibacterial wet wipes, but it doesn't need to be as far as the tissue is wet. It collects dust much more efficiently than a dry one. I have a seat bag inside of my studio. It is specially for collecting this type of waste. Once it is full, I pull everything into the sweep bag. The general guide for the sweep bag is when the trash you have collected weighs over 2 kg, it is time to pass it to the refiner. If you like this video so far, do you mind clicking the like button? Thank you. The second place where we can find our collectible trash is on our bench tray or bench skin if you use one. The bench tray in my studio is made of metal. After all the clean scrap is collected, the precious metal dust here is mixed in with metal shavings and normal dust. Brush all this dust away and put it in a jar. The surface looks clean now, but if you wipe it with a wet wipe, there are still lots of metal dust here. This is where the high grade filings and dust is lurking. If you use a bench skin, which is normally made of leather, you can do the same. The third place that you can collect your valuable trash is your bench top, which is normally made of wood. If you look closer, it is not hard to see lots of metal particles have been ground into the wood. It's worthwhile to sand down the bench top every few years. I personally don't like dust too much, so I normally vacuum and sand the desktop at the same time to minimize having the dust flying around. If you don't like sanding down your wooden tabletop like me, here's my way to avoid it. You can see that the area around my bench, it is covered with a cutting mat. In this way, I only need to wipe it off with a wet wipe whenever I want to clean it. I don't feel comfortable to wet wipe my wooden tabletop every other day because I'm not sure how much moist it can withstand. But this problem doesn't exist with the cutting mat. The other place where to collect this kind of hidden treasure is around your polishing station. Basically, everything used for jewelry polishing can be collected into the sweep bag. This includes the dust around the polishing machine, the polishing mops, and any brushes you use. If you use an extractor unit around your polishing machine, make sure to include the filters as well. Don't forget the liquid if you use a magnetic tumbler or a barrel tumbler to polish your jewelry. When it's time to change the liquid, you can pour it into a ceramic coffee dipper with three coffee filter papers.
Come back in a few hours. After the liquid has gone through the paper, leave it there to dry. You can see lots of particles has been caught by the coffee filter paper. Clean the wall of the bowl with wet wipes as well. Collect all this into the sweep bag. You can do the same to the water that comes out from your ultrasonic machine. One more place where this valuable trash hides is the fabric within the studio. This includes your clothes, your apron, your carpets, and your doormat if you have one. If you have curtains in your studio, that counts as well. For this, you can simply vacuum them. Lots of jewelry making studios have a separate vacuum used specially for this purpose. When the vacuum bag is full, put it into the sweep bag. When choosing a doormat for your studio, a coconut doormat works really well for brushing off any precious metal from the bottom of your shoes. Another type of places where the treasure hides is any hard surface in your studio. This varies. It depends on what you have in your place. In my studio, this includes window seal, any of the extractor pipes, the acrylic boards where I put my emery paper, and the surface of my bench drill, etc. Don't forget the floor if you have a hard floor, because they are all waterproof. You can either wet wipe them or vacuum them once a week, unless you are as lazy as me. I normally do that once every three to four months, or whenever I lose a gemstone and I need to do a carpet search. The last place is the sink, where you wash your hand. There is lots of precious metal washed down the sink when we wash our hand, our jewelry, and even when mopping the floor. That's why lots of jewelry making studios have a settlement tank installed between the sink and the drain. This enables it to collect precious metal sludge from the wastewater. Emptying time will depend on how busy your studio is. Normally every two to five years, I would say. Once you have collected this valuable trash, you can send it to the refiner of your choice. They are the professionals who can reclaim all the precious metals in your trash. After deducting the handling fee, you will receive a check based on the current market price of your reclaimed precious metal. The last batch of trash I sent it to my refiner came back as the check for more than 1,000 US dollars. If you like this video, you might want to check out the one here. It's about how to make your silver ingots following five simple steps. I will see you in the next video.